Angel fans, there are a lot of questions that are hanging over the Halos in 2024. So what questions are the most important? What are the what are the burning questions that the Angels need to answer this season? We're going to tell you what those questions are and why. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to get back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. New customers, when you join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Friday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Man, everybody's working for the weekend, Mike, and the weekend's here. Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready <laughs> for ready. this weekend? I'm ready. Let's go. It's that lull between the playoffs and Super Bowl Sunday that really sucks. But you know what? Yeah. And we'll we'll be excited this time next week too because our 49ers are uh, in the Super Bowl again. So Heck that's yeah, exci- we got a team we can actually root for. That's exciting. <laughs> that's good. They're good, Johnny. They're I good. I feel like I feel like you know the fact that we're doing. The Angels podcast, and this is our third season, of course. Uh, we, we deserve to have a good team to root for somewhere, yes. somehow, out there somewhere. Amen. So there you go. Uh, hey, just a couple show notes. We're going back to five days a week starting yeah. Monday, everybody. Five days so, a week. and we're looking forward to that. We hope that you'll join us Monday through Friday as we gear up for the 2024 season. We got a lot to talk about. Don't worry, there are no lack of conversations that Mike and I will have with you here on Lockdown Angels on today's show. Which questions? Do we absolutely need answers to during the 2024 Angels season? We're going to share with you which questions we think are the most pressing, and then we're going to explain why they need answers. Let's start with the big questions, Mike. There's some big questions I think are on everybody's mind. Why don't you hit us with question one? Most important question I think that every Angel fan wants to know and that the Angels need to answer, specifically that Mike Trout needs to answer, and it's this one, Johnny. Can the Angels count on Mike Trout. Can Mm. they still count on Mike Trout? Of course, Mm -hmm. he's been out with injuries in 2021, 2022, 2023. He said his 2020 season was a terrible season. You look back at those numbers and you're like, I'll take that based upon the injuries (laughs) you've had the last few years. Every time he's on the field, John, he's been a valuable part of this team. He's been pretty productive, but he hasn't been able to play a full season's worth of games in the last few years. We shared this uh, earlier this week that he's only played 119 games, over 100 games, once in the last four years. And Mm -hmm. so it'd be great to see him reach that 100-game mark and obviously get to maybe 130, get to 140. And if that's the case, I think the Angels would be super competitive. So, Johnny, why is this question, why is this the question that needs to be answered this season? Yeah, why do they need to answer this question? Well, he's turning 33 this year, Mike, and the Angels are going to need to figure out how to keep him healthy because their success is intrinsically tied to Trout's playing time and his success. They need him in the clubhouse. They need him on the field. And if they can't keep him on the field, they need to figure out who's the centerpiece of this team and who's the bat that they can continue to build this team around. And I like the fact that he's the veteran presence on this team. I like the fact that he's the centerpiece and they've got some youngsters around him who can really help lift him up. But the fact is, is, If he can't stay on the field and be the centerpiece of this team, that means that they might need to make an investment on another centerpiece that they can have for the next five, seven years. And and maybe that's an investment in like, maybe it's not him specifically, but someone like him, a Cody Bellinger, where you get somebody in the off season that you plan on having for the next five to seven to 10 years that you're comfortable with that you can build around. So if the angels want to continue to build around Mike Trout, They got to answer this question. Now, Mike, how do they answer this question? Can the Angels still count on Mike Trout? Johnny, if the answer is yes, then it means that the Angels did the following. They found a way to keep Trout healthy 
and on the field, mm. they found a way to utilize the DH spot and give him a chance to get off of his feet. They found a way to adjust their game plan if he isn't able to stay in center field. Hmm. And perhaps this is the year that they begin to put that into practice. This is the year where Hmm. he spends less time in center field and moves to the corner positions. Now, I know Perry said he's our center fielder. Perry, that's the right answer. But I do think that they need a new approach with Mike Trout. So if if they answer this question with yes, then they kept him on the field. They found a way. They utilize that DH and they have a great game plan to adjust if he isn't able to stay in center field. Question two, Mike, what do the Angels have in their young starting rotation? That's a burning question that the team must answer. Pitching has always been an issue for this team. They haven't had solid homegrown talent since Jared Weaver. Ding, there's a reference. Irvin Santana, Garrett Richards is probably the last pitcher I can think of yeah. who the Angels developed and was really good until he got hurt. Um, and they just lost their their ace, Mike, in Shohei Otani. So why does this question need to be answered? Well, it's because we don't know who these young starters are yet. For example, Correct. we've got Patrick Sandoval in 2022 with a 2.91 ERA and a 138 ERA+, plus, which means Ooh. he was... 38% better than league average. But then in 2023, he struggles to a 4.11 ERA and has 109 ERA plus last season. So you have this really great season from him. And then he comes back out. You think things are going to go great for him. And then he struggles. Same thing yeah. with Reed Detmers. He finished 2022 with a 3.77 ERA and had a, a 106 plus ERA or sorry, a 106 ERA plus. Then he comes out in 2023, he finishes with a, a basically a four and a half ERA Mm -hmm. and is exactly league average. So my question here, and this is why this question needs to be answered is which is it? Is it that these guys have hit their peak and we've seen the best that they're ever going to be. And that's, you know, a, a a four ERA and a four and a half ERA, or is it the fact that they haven't had the right coaching or the right development around them? Mike, if the angels are going to answer what they have in their young starting rotation. How do the angels answer this question? They, they got to give the young staff a chance to show who they are. And, and Mm. I know it was Phil Nevin and I know it was Suarez and, and both of those guys may not have a huge impact. Well, one of them for sure isn't going to have an impact (laughs) on the team and the other one may not. But what I liked about that moment, we've hit this a couple of times on the show is that Phil let him stay in the game, came out, checked on him, let him stay in the game and he let him power through to get through that fifth inning. And this is the type of energy and the type of coaching that Ron Washington needs to bring to this team and Barry Enright needs to bring to this pitching staff. They need to give these guys a shot. Let's see what they can do. Let's see if they can figure it out. And and these pitchers need to trust the coaching staff. And quite honestly, they haven't really had that luxury the last few years based upon who they've had around them. And that this coaching staff needs to guide them and help them figure things out, not tell them to adjust their entire game plan. Like, Hey, Reed, why don't you just pitch to contact since you're really struggling with, (laughs) right. That was such a dumb move. And then Reed figures it out the next start and even figures out how to throw his slider differently. And Reed, who taught you that? Oh, I was sitting on the bench and I figured it out. Right. And so that's the type of stuff that has to stop. Like they need to have a cohesion when it comes to their pitching staff and their coaching staff mm-hmm. and, and basically Barry Enright and with this, with this starting rotation and they need to provide the coaching staff with all that they need. It's, it's, it's up to them, right. To have all of the tools, all of the resources that can help move this pitching staff from potential to perform it performance. And this is the year, Johnny, that they need to figure all of that out. And I think that they have a shot to do that because I'm really excited about this coaching staff. You doing okay over there with that? <laughs> your, your camera? <laughs> just just tried to move the camera back a little bit and it almost fell off the desk. My bad. So audio, audio listeners are fine. We're, we're, right. we're okay. Over Didn't there. even notice. I yeah, should have exactly. not said anything. <laughs> <laughs> My question three is burning on all of our minds. And that's, mm. What's going to happen with this ownership? Just to set the stage here, let's reiterate that there hasn't been any news about ownership or already selling or anything like that. But after putting the team on the market in 2022 and taking it off in 2023, is there incentive for Artie Marino to put them back up for sale? Look, the, the Angelos family is selling the Orioles and they're going to sell for $1.7 billion is the estimated yeah, yeah. Uh, sale price there. So it's time to sell. 
Party. Mike, why does this question need to be answered? Well, uh, team president, John Carpino, everybody's favorite. This is the last year of his contract with the Angels. Perry Manassian, the GM, last year of his contract with the Angels. The TV rights and money, that situation changes after 2024, and it's still ambiguous. They're not Mm -hmm. sure what's going to happen there, right? And if it's going to be on Amazon, and right now they can't do that because... Uh, Bally's doesn't have the streaming rights for the angels. They can right. broadcast them on TV, but they can't stream them, which is so interesting to me. Of course <laughs> it's messy. Right. And then the lease for the stadium, something that really hasn't been discussed. It's over in 2029. And yeah. does the current ownership want to be around for all of this? Johnny? Right. That's the big question, right? Do they want to stay and figure all of this stuff out? Now's the time to make a commitment and to re up, or now's the time to do what the Orioles did and sell and let mm-hmm. the new owners come in and figure out all of this mess. Yeah, and and so how do the Angels answer this question, Mike? I think it's simple. They just do. They just, huh. they just they just make a decision this season. We need a clear picture of what's going to happen after 2024, especially with the expiring contracts of Carpino and Manassian and the TV deal is still up in the air. So, it's all going to need to be addressed this season and probably sooner rather than later. They're going to have to make a decision. Like you said, do they want to be around for it or do they want to pass that on to the next ownership group? Man, I really hope they sell this season because all the incentive to sell is yeah. there in yeah. my opinion. Uh, thanks yeah. for making Locked On Angels your first listen every single day. We're just getting started here. Coming up, we're looking at the most important questions this team needs to answer in 2024 regarding the team itself. So we'll get into all of that coming right up. Hey, today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Uh, It's going to be Super Bowl week soon, and we're really excited about that because we're Niner fans. If you're not football fans or Niner fans or Chiefs fans, I'm sorry. Uh, But FanDuel (laughs) is excited about the Super Bowl, and they are America's number one sports book. And if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is going to be about scoring the best seats on the couch and grabbing your favorite snacks, hanging out with your favorite friends, or maybe not hanging out with any friends so that you can yell and scream at the TV and not be distracted, right? And maybe even placing some super bets, and FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets on which players will score a touchdown. I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with CMC. I'm, I think that's a guarantee. Oh, that's a guarantee for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I bet on him. And I think Debo would be a great smart move as well. And even on the on the Chiefs side, I'm sure Travis Kelsey is going to find his way into the end zone at some point, right? How many points will be scored? You can bet on that. There's so many more. And new customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. And you can make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. It's the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every single day. We are so grateful that you are here with us. Now, if you want more sports conversation, you know that Locked On Sports Today on YouTube is the place to go. It's the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel and it's available on youtube so head on over to locked on sports today hit that subscribe button and you'll be awash in sports conversation all day long from the local experts of locked on there you go english major baby Uh uh the local experts of locked on plus the national shows as well so head on over to locked on sports today and subscribe to the first ever 24 7 national sports streaming channel you said pertinent on our Wednesday show, which I appreciated. Now a washed, like that degree, you're putting it to work. I love that. Okay, Johnny. I didn't, I didn't think it was having anything to do with the conversation. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the questions that need to be answered by the Angels this year. Johnny, question number four is what impact does the coaching staff have on the Angels? So let's review. Let's go back, right? <laughs> Old school reference there for uh, uh, all you older people like me. Uh, let's review where this coaching staff has been the last few years. They they hired Mickey Calloway as the pitching coach in 2020, but he was fired after his inappropriate behavior was made known in, in 2021. Then mm-hmm. Matt Wise moves in from bullpen coach to interim pitching coach, and he stays on as pitching coach for the last three years. He felt three like three years. He felt like uh, it, just between you and you and I, John. Remember the modulars at the church that I lead? Remember how they were supposed to be like uh, like only there for a couple of years, and they ended up being there for like <laughs> twenty seven years. About those temporary, yeah. Like I taught high school English out of one of those modulars. It was yes. like 
oh yeah, this is just temporary, but then it just right. ends up becoming a permanent thing. 40 yeah, years Matt, later, they're still Matt, there. Matt Wise <laughs> is the modular of pitching coaches. I love that. <laughs> yes, he is. And then Jeremy Reed is someone Angel fans, and me included, you included, were very frustrated with. He was the hitting coach. He was let go prior to 2023. Marcus Timms comes in, and he had – an approach, which was attack the zone, yeah. hit early, hit hard. And the guys didn't seem to make adjustments after that. They didn't really come up in situational moments and think intentionally and logically on how they're mm -hmm. supposed to come through in that moment. Right. And then Joe Madden comes in in 2020. Perry doesn't seem to trust him. There's a lot of interference between both of those guys right. on how to manage. Right. Madden's let go in 22. Phil Nevin takes over. Nevin gets the job in 23 in light of the pending sale. And then the sale doesn't happen. And so he's kind of this manager for the team, what happens next year. And really, John, I think Nevin's inexperience showed in a lot of really key moments in mm -hmm. 2023, especially with Rendon kind of acting a fool and, and being kind of really participating in nonsense and saying stupid things in the, in the clubhouse. Sure. It seemed like Nevin just lost control of that clubhouse, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that was a big indictment on Nevin. Unfortunately for him, I think Nevin's a nice guy and I think he was asked to do a lot above his, his pay grade, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, right. and, and so they were like, kind of threw him to the wolves a little bit there, but you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I am glad that we have an experienced manager in the clubhouse. So let's look Absolutely. at where the coaching staff is right now. We have Ron Washington on a two year deal to be the manager. Perry Minossian got to hire the guy that he wants for a change as a manager by extension. Wash gets to bring in the coaches he'd like to have on his staff. We have Barry Enright, assistant pitching coach, uh, for the Diamondbacks who worked under Brent Strom. You might've heard of him. He's widely considered one of the best pitching coaches in Major League Baseball, Johnny Washington, no relation to Ron Washington, he was the assistant hitting coach for the Cubs and one of the key contributors for helping Cody Bellinger to have such a good season at the plate. And then there's Bo Porter, uh, who's going to be the first base uh, coach and base running coach, who has already spoken about the Angels being more aggressive on the base paths and being less predictable mm -hmm. to the other team. And I think that's going to make a big difference. Eric Young Sr. is widely respected. Uh, he's going to be the third base coach. He's coming from the Braves with Wash. So, Mike, why now? Now that we've set up, you know, what impact does this coaching staff have on the Angels? We talked about where they've been and where they are now. Why does this question need to be answered in 2024? Well, it's felt like the last three seasons the Angels have been playing despite themselves, like maybe yes. even against themselves. Yeah, right? no kidding. It felt like it felt like a, a very directionless and aimless squad. And I know that the Angels haven't been good since 2014, but there were some seasons with Mike Sosha on board where it was like, well, we were close and we still feel like a, cohes a cohesive team. But when Brad Osmus came and then Madden came and then Nevin came, it, it really has felt directionless and yeah. aimless. And that's yeah. why I think that there's a lot of vitriol out there from uh, longtime Angel fans where they're just right. frustrated, right? right. I, think, I think really that's why miserable Mark is miserable Mark, right? Like <laughs> that, that poor guy has had to put up with a lot. But Johnny, the big question is, is this team talented and it just hasn't had the right guidance? Hmm. Or is this who they are and the coaching staff, I really think, is going to help us figure out what question is the appropriate question to, an to ask and get a really good answer from that, right? Well, the problem I see, Mike, is like a lot of people say like, well, this, this starting rotation is a bunch of threes, fours, fives, and even sixes. And I'm right. like, but, but Sandy just had a, Two nine one ERA season, like yeah, uh, a year ago, and and yeah. so where'd that go? Because to me, that screams lack of coaching, lack of guidance. Like the talent is there, and and like you said, the Angels are playing despite themselves. Patrick Sandoval got a two nine one ERA despite himself and the right. team around him and, and that the wise. coaching. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. like yeah, like he lucked his way out of a paper bag with that season, and and so what I'm saying is like. Are we going to find out if this team is talented or not? And I think we'll get the answer to that question because yeah. of the coaching staff that we have around them now. So how do the Angels answer this question? How much of an impact will this coaching staff have on this team? We need to see fundamental, tangible stuff you can hold in your hand, real change yeah. to this team. We need to see situational hitting improve. We need to see hitters 
uh, hitting with runners in scoring position improve. We need to see base running that puts pressure on the opposing pitcher like Bo Porter talked about. We need to see a lot of defensive improvements in the infield. And then, right. Mike, this is the biggest one for me. We need more efficient starts from mm-hmm. the starters, and we need smarter pitching from this rotation. So I think that that is how you answer that question. Is this coaching staff going to have an impact? Well, I think right there you got to see – those fundamental changes take place this season. Question number five is what's the plan for this team? You know, the angels got better in the bullpen, right? And that's kind of it. Like they, they added a ton of positional depth with experienced players, but that's essentially just a lot of backups. There was no big free agents, no big impact bats as of yet. So do they plan to build for the future or do they plan on competing or do they have a plan at all? I mean, that's the question really, right, Johnny? Yeah, I've often said the Angels can't see past their hand in front of their face. And yeah, that's been the problem with this team. And you're right. Like they they made improvements in the bullpen and that's where they upgraded. They didn't upgrade anywhere else, essentially. Like a lot of this is the same team as last year. And so you're counting on guys to play above where they've been before. Like, look, I think Logan Ohapi is going to have a great season. I think he's going to be a major player for this team. Yeah. But he hasn't done it yet. So coming into 2024 is the the prove it year essentially. So why does this question need to be answered? Well, look, they they made a big investment in the coaching staff when bringing in Ron Washington. Like this is a really good coaching staff, Mike. Like this is really good. So is the plan going into this season hoping that they just improve the talent that they already have because they haven't made any quote unquote playoff moves and does that mean that they're confident in who they have on staff and on the roster? Uh, are they evaluating the talent they have locked up for the foreseeable future? Because you've got a lot of guys under team control like Neto and Ohapi and Shawnawell and, and the pitching staff. Like you have a lot of those guys locked up for a good long time. So if that's the case, they have to see it through and they have to commit to that. And it might not mean a lot of success for 2024. I'm sorry to say it. Angel fans who are looking forward to the season, like Mike and I have said, like no expectations. I think this is a very evaluative season. So yeah, that's why it needs to be answered. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? What's the plan? Yeah. Yeah. And here's how they answer it, Johnny. They got to let the guys develop like Sam Bachman, for example, who Mm. was was a high draft pick. Instead of rushing these guys to the majors, they need to let them marinate in the minors. Right. They are number, our number one pick from, from June in 2024 should not be on the team right this year. <laughs> right. Like if, right. if if they're gonna let guys develop, like yeah. don't don't get a number one guy and put him on the team like Nolan right. Shawnawell this right. year. And then I think the other big thing too is is not make any signings that compromise their top four in the in the top 100 picks in the draft in June. They they can't mess with that. They need to utilize those things and be able to take advantage of those things. And then trade necessary pieces at or around the trade deadline, especially the one the guys that are on one-year deals or on expiring contracts like Estevez and like Brandon Drury. Yeah, I think that sets them up for success in the future because teams get a lot more desperate around the trade deadline to take on those kinds of contracts. And again, that means not signing a Bellinger because you have yeah. to give up a draft pick there. That means yeah. not signing... Uh, uh, like Matt, I think Matt Chapman, I think was one of the other ones too. So there's, there's a lot of guys with, uh, those qualifying offers attached to them and, and they lose a draft pick on right. that. Finally, Mike, for this segment, question six, what's the clubhouse culture? Like you have mm. a young, hungry group of guys that are talented they They want to play. They want to step up. You have a run through the wall kind of manager in Ron Washington. You want to run through a wall for that guy. We've heard that many times. We've got a young core of players to build this franchise on. On the other hand, you've also got a very disinterested Anthony Rendon. You've got a frustrated Mike Trout, not only with the team, but with himself, I'm sure, because he's been injured. You just lost Shohei Otani's presence in the clubhouse. You've had eight straight losing seasons, and they're on their sixth different manager since 2018. So, What's the clubhouse culture going to be like, Mike? Why do they need to answer 
that question for us. Well, well, because the word around MLB, not just in Angel Land, but around MLB, is that the Angels are where careers go to die, right? Like, like the discourse around the Angels has always been negative. It really, especially amongst the media, even when they do something good, they're like, "Why are they signing that guy?" That doesn't right. make sense, right? <laughs> and they've really lost a lot of appeal. Like it used to be, come and play with a generational talent like Trout, or come and play with a unicorn like Otani. The team has really been in a lot of disarray the last three years. And so, Johnny, how are the Angels going to answer this question? I think Ron Washington needs to be upfront and vocal at every press conference, every post game press conference, Mike, he needs to be very vocal about this team and what's going on. We just need transparency. And I think that that is going to take away any mystery regarding the clubhouse because the angels have not let coaches and staff speak to the media. And I don't think Ron Washington is going to be that kind of guy. I think he's going to speak his mind. And I think that's very important. The coaching staff needs to change the culture by changing who these players are fundamentally like yep. they need to give them a brand of baseball to play and an identity to be. And then the young players, Mike, they need their moments to shine. They need their opportunity to have big moments and they also need the tools to succeed. And again, that comes from the coaching staff. Finally, Mike, I think Mike Trout, he needs his groove back. He needs to remind everyone <laughs> this season. <We're> <laughs> he needs to remind everybody of who he is and, Honestly, have an MVP caliber season yeah. because I think that's going to change the way people look at this franchise come 2024. Hey, can I take a moment and talk to you about Logic's credit union? They have some really great auto loans that you, I think, could really benefit from. So first, let me talk about the proven and dependable new and used vehicle loans. You can count on Logic's to give you low rates and save you big time bucks. They also have electric vehicle loans. And so for some of you that are moving to the electric vehicle, they have loans that are have super low rates, flexible payment terms. And then they also have auto refinancing loans and lease buyout loans. With Logix, you can lower your monthly payments and then get on the road to owning your car a whole lot faster. Really, nobody beats Logix. And so you should visit a Logix branch in your area, especially if you're in the LA area. And one of their amazing team members will help you. You can also get started by applying online at logicsbanking.com slash car. Again, you can visit logicsbanking.com slash car. That's L-O-G-I-X banking.com slash car. And Logix also is a proud sponsor of For the Troops. For more information on the upcoming For the Troops gala, visit www.forthetroops.org slash event. And there you'll get more information. Mike, we've got a couple more questions that the Angels must answer in 2024. These has to do with a uh, these have to do with a couple of position players. Let's start with the question number seven. What's the plan with Joe Adele? What's going on there? And they Johnny, they need to, they need to answer this. Joe isn't a free agent until 2027, so he's got a lot of time until after 2027, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So. He peaked as the number three prospect in the top 100 prospects back in 2020 and has really hmm, been given somewhat of an effort to play some real time. In 2020, at least, he was given that effort because he wasn't going to be able to play in the minor leagues. But since then, it's kind of been hit or miss. And he's really struggled, Johnny. And yeah. when you look at him in the minor leagues, he's been pretty decent. I know his batting average is low, but he's been pretty decent. So in four seasons... 178 games. He's got a 214 batting average, a 259 on base, 366 slugging, and a 625 OPS. 18 home runs, 55 runs scored, 66 RBI, seven stolen bases, 219 Ks. Oof. And that's the problem. He's got a career K rate of 35.4%. And that's John, across. And that's where he really struggles. That's across the four seasons in the majors that he's had so far, which has only totaled 178 games. So essentially just yeah. a little bit more than one full season yeah. uh, of playing time is what he's gotten in, in the majors. Uh, his defensive metrics, of course, that's been kind of a knock against him. A career 977 fielding percentage, 980 is about league average. A positive, and you've brought this up on this show, in 2023 had a 1,000 fielding percentage at all outfield positions across 15 games. He had two defensive run saves in center and one defensive run saved in left field. Now, why does this question need to be answered about Joe Adele? We need to know what kind of player he is and what kind of player he can be and have a full season to do it. We have said on this show many times that we felt like a lot of Adele's issues were in his head. They were mind issues. They were mind games, Mike. And 
And he needed a full season in the minors to really just gain some confidence. And essentially he had that full season in the minors last year where he was tearing it up. And, and I think that is why his defense has gotten so much better. Now, how do the angels answer this question? What's the plan with Joe Adele? Give him a full season in the majors. I mean, mm. he's got, he's got no options left. Uh, he's going to need a role on this team. I know that we talked about this the other day, the Aaron Hicks deal kind of throws a wrench into all of this. I'm, I'm concerned about how much playing time he's going to get. Otherwise, Trade him because yeah. if that's the answer that we need, then trade him. Just do it already. Because if you don't have a plan for this guy, again, that you have a lot of years under control for Joe Adele, then then trade him. Because yeah. if you're not going to give him a role, then it's time to move on. Yeah. And then the last question, Johnny, is can Louis Renhifo perform when games matter? So his, <laughs> Quote, unquote. <laughs> his his five-year career with the Angels from uh, 2019 to 2021 – his OPS plus was 66 and he had a, a, a somewhat decent slash line. Not great, but then no, from 2022 to 2023, <laughs> he had a OPS plus of 107 and his slash line was greatly improved. And of course the biggest criticism about him is that he's a hot hitter late in the season, but the angels haven't been great late in the season. So is it his fault, Johnny, or is it his lack of playing time? Well, when the angels start a season, they have their regulars, at every position and Renhifo's off the bench and then inevitably people get hurt and Renhifo steps in and gets more consistent playing time because of guys getting hurt. And Mike, we talked about this before last season. He didn't really get consistent starts until July when the angels needed him. He got 15 starts in May. He hit 197 in that month in June. He got 18 starts and he hit 209. Then in July was when he started playing every day. Now he did have 19 starts, but it's because he started coming in consistently uh, in the middle of the month. And, and he went on to hit 315 and have a 1,069 OPS. And then in August, he hits 327 and has a 911 OPS. So why does this need to be answered? The Angels need to figure out if Renhifo can contribute all season long and find out if that consistency is what makes him good. If they give him a chance to play every day somewhere, he can play second, short, third, the outfield, Maybe they build up his value for a midseason trade. I know that he's got uh, he's a free agent after 2025, so it might be worth their while to build up that value and get something for him because he always seems to be on everybody's radar. So how do the Angels answer this question? They got to find a way to get Renhifo into every single game, and perhaps they build him up for some third base in spring training because uh, we need a backup to Rendon, and Ron Washington can really help improve Renhifo's defense. So the Angels got to figure it out what they're going to do with Luis and Hifo this year. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. If you haven't yet, checked out the Locked On Sports Today YouTube channel. It's the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. Of course, it is on YouTube. You can go there right now and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros. On Twitter and Instagram, whether you're watching or listening, find today's show on YouTube. Get in the comments and get in on the conversation. Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? We're back to five shows a week starting Woo! on Monday. And on Monday, we're going to start with the potential leader of this team in 2024. That's Logan Ohapi. We're going to look at the positives, the negatives, and what we can expect from Logan Ohapi this season. And that's Monday on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. We hope you have a great weekend and join us on Monday. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Five days a week. Bye.